live your life. Welcome to the, today's class. The only thing I'm not liking about this new technology technology is I don't get to cook with you as much in the kitchen. Someone needs to keep up with the computer. <laughs> and, I gotta be behind the scenes and, and, and all the technology. And uh, so I won't do any more classes. No more. That's, That's it. it. We're this, done. This is our last class for 2021. Yes. Believe, yeah, it is. It is. I was going to say 2022, but that's kind of overextending it maybe a bit. 20, <laughs> maybe 2022 also. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, we are uh, Dario and Anita with oliveyourlife.org. We inspire you to live your life. That's basically what it is around food, travel, and thank you for joining us today. Cheers. Salute. Salute. Hey. Oh, ah. I forgot. I'm looking at the camera. <laughs> the, um, I'm going to take a drink first. Mm. Nice, huh? Wonderful. So I challenged Dario to create some of the traditional dishes and make them a bit more healthy. And uh, that's kind of the series that we're rolling out over the next few months. Again, this is going to be the last class for this year. Until next year. We'll see what happens. But, I, you know, there's quite a few recipes out there that if we can make these little tweaks here and there, uh, we can create them to be a little bit um, healthier. And I think with the one thing with this dish is, tell me if I'm wrong, can you make it in advance? Definitely, definitely. This is the best thing about this. I call this one the perfect versatile Christmas Eve uh, or any private pri pri event. If you have a Super Bowl party, if you go to an event, you wanna bring something. Is yeah. your Mediterranean casserole. Okay, so it's Mediterranean pasticcio. Pasticcio. Did I say it right? Pasticcio. Not to confuse with the pastizzi, which is the Greek one. Oh. Yeah, the Greek always have their own oh. pastizzi, which is which is it, it's almost the same. This one is our Italian version of the pasticcio, which we're gonna have pasta with that, and we're gonna try to make a um, different type of. Uh, it's kind of a different. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's the Mediterranean meat, North America or meet the fall or the winter in Canada. Yeah, well, I'm so excited because of course I'm gonna be eating this tonight, so I'm very excited. Mm -hmm. All recipes will be after tomorrow or probably a Monday at oliveyourlife.org. And you'll find this recipe with all the details if you happen to catch this recording afterwards. So ciao, ciao for now. I'm gonna take my wine with me. So pasticcio, pasticcio in, trans in a little translation mean mess. Okay, if that, if that sounds right. Um, what it is, is actually your version of a lasagna, which is not in layer and everything is kind of mixed. So if we look at the recipe, uh, we are gonna make a, a tomato sauce base of sausage seasoned with anchovies. What we have done uh, ahead already, we took a, a, a butternut squash, Half of the butternut squash, we roast it in the oven with a little bit of salt and pepper, touch of maple syrup, a little bit of olive oil, and we roast it in the oven until it's soft. As soon as it's soft, we take it out and we puree it, okay? Now, can you add any herbs? Sure. You can add some rosemary, you can add some thyme, you can add absolutely anything you want. But you see, it's nice and puree, and we're gonna keep it on the side because we're gonna make our bechamel. But the bechamel is gonna have you know, bechamel is basically your, your creamier version of, uh, of this dish, which is we're going to make a roux, which is equal part of flour, equal part of butter. We're going to show you, and we're going to infuse some of the roasted butternut squash. Now, because the butternut squash, and we really do believe in nutrition, we really do believe in a healthier way of doing it, well, we kept the other half of the butternut squash, what we did, we just juiced it, okay? We put them in a juicer, but we kept all the pulp. As you know, I need to create a lot of juices through our recipe, uh, uh, as you can see in all of your life. Um, so what it is, is that's basically the pulp and everything of the butternut squash. So you can smell the freshness, the earthiness of the butternut squash, which is gonna be also infused. So I'm gonna move this one quickly, okay? And I'll show you what we already did there. We have the roasted pepper here, so what we done with the roasted pepper, okay? And I'm gonna show you very, very quickly. We roast them, we peel them, okay? And now we're gonna quickly season them because we wanted to marinate a little bit, okay? So how are we gonna marinate? Very simple. We're gonna have a little bit of salt, 
okay? We're gonna have a little bit of fresh brown black pepper. And then what we add, we have a combination of fresh herbs. So what we have here, we have half of the parsley, just the leaf, which we are gonna break with our hand. We are not gonna chop it, okay? We don't believe in chopping the fresh leaf of the parsley. That's all the nutrition are here. So we just keep it like that, just half of the parsley. The other half of the parsley we can use for something else, okay? And we're gonna keep it on the side. And then also we're gonna put a little bit of fresh basil. Again, basil leaf, okay? Fresh basil leaf right here. Okay, right now, this time of the year, the basil, you know, that's why sometimes it's good to have your own garden of fresh basil. It's a little too large. We have our own garden in, in the summertime and we feast on basil, fresh herbs, and vegetables than we have on our own garden. So again, nothing else, salt, pepper, okay? And now we're gonna have a little bit of olive oil. Can you add a little bit of garlic? Sure you can, but I'm not gonna add it, and I'll tell you why. There is a very specific reason why I'm not adding the garlic, because the garlic is gonna be part of many of the other ingredients. So I really do not want to overcomplicate this dish. Okay, so here we go. We have our squash ready. We have our, our roasted pepper marinated. Also here we have our zucchini and our um, eggplant. We cut in small little dice. We saute in a hot skillet with a little bit of olive oil, just olive oil, salt and pepper. And then once they have this beautiful color that you see over here, we drain them and we put them on a paper towel to remove all the excess fat, okay? So basically when we are looking at our, of our mise en place, as we call it, we are almost there. So as you can see, we have our squash already roasted, we have our squash um, juice, we have our pepper, and we have our vegetable, okay? But the most important thing now is talking about the condiments. The condiments, then they are part or the big part of this dish. And this is gonna be something maybe a little bit different than potentially you're used to, okay? So let's start with our tomato sauce, okay? Our base sauce, one of our base sauce of this, um, of this dish. So I have a hot skillet here, and I'm gonna make sure the skillet gets really hot, okay? I have some garlic cloves, okay? I'm gonna probably use one head of garlic cloves. As you can see, I removed, see the little, Part of it there, that's the green germs that we want to remove because if you don't remove it, it will make our sauce really, really bitter and too strong, okay? We don't want the strength of the garlic, we want the flavor of the garlic, which is very, very important. Again, I'm not chopping it. I really have no, I'm not interested in chopping it. So I'm gonna keep it just like that. I got the onions here, which they are finely, finely diced. And then I'm gonna add my seasoning here of the anchovies. The anchovies here are the element of seasoning. I have a question. What is the question? Now, the garlic looks like you were slicing it. Yes. So you, is there a difference between slicing and yes. chopping and why yes. to me it looks the same? Well, we want to, like we said, keep the essence of the garlic. As soon as we are chopping the garlic, what happened? All the nutrients of the garlic they are gonna be remaining on the bottom of the cutting board. Can you but, do the exact same thing and what you just did there? That was what the question was. No, no, no. What we done here, we are slicing it. So all the nutrients are still here. I didn't chop it. When you're chopping something, what are you doing? You're chopping it, meaning you continuously going back and forth here. So you release all the central oil and all the central oil remaining on the bottom of the, of the board. By slicing it, okay? You're lightly bruising the garlic, but you are not taking away all the nutrients. So I always recommend never to really chop garlic if possible. And I'll show you why. So I have a skillet here. I also say do not, they're asking about the press, the garlic press. Uh, <laughs> do not use the garlic press. I do not recommend garlic press. Um, maybe they're good for many things. I mean, the only good thing about the garlic press, you know what it is, is that maybe a little bit faster. Um, but it maybe your hands don't smell, but to me, the nutrients of a good product is very important. So I'm gonna have some fillet of anchovies. 
And that is the first thing I'm adding here. Okay, watch this. So I wanna make sure the anchovies are perfectly cooking. Okay. The next thing I'm gonna add, I'm gonna start adding the sausages. So now this is garlic sausage, okay? What we're gonna do with the garlic sausage, we want to make sure they, they have lots of fat already. So we don't want to add any more unless it's needed. I removed the casing, okay? So basically we have just the, the ground part of the garlic sausage. So as you can see, the garlic is breaking down. It's becoming a little bit of a pulp. Okay, and this is where we're creating that so-called foundation. Okay, I want to make sure that I'm breaking everything. And you can see the garlic sausage release some of their fat. So basically what we're doing is called rendering. We're rendering all the fat. Okay, break it down nicely. And as you notice, I haven't put the garlic, I haven't put the onions yet. Why? Because otherwise, if I would have put it first, I would have burned it. Okay, and I'm not interested in doing that. So here we go. Now, at this time, as you can see, there is very little fat. Okay, the only fat I'm going to have is just sufficient to have my garlic. And of course, it's sufficient to add my onions. So again, the onions are super finely diced. And now we're just gonna let everything come in together. Okay, look at that. So now I know my garlic is gonna break down with the meat. The onions are gonna flavoring. So I, what I have right now is the perfect marriage Okay, for building those flavor for my sauce. I just got a question. Is this going to be very fishy? Not fishy whatsoever. Why? Because the anchovies? Yeah. No, absolutely not. The anchovies, they were you were actually not tasting at all. In many savory, um, in many meat actually recipe, uh, you actually use anchovies to upbeat the salt. And why are you doing that? Because it's more of a natural seasoning. Okay, now if you use the anchovies on a raw version, yes, you might taste it. But I really put two fillets of anchovies here. So what's going to happen? They're really going to break right down, and they are just going to give me the seasoning necessary. Now, are we are we saying that that's going to be just sufficient? Probably not. But we're going to taste it. We're going to check it all out. But definitely, it's not going to be too sure there. Okay, so we're gonna let's make sure that our onions, our garlic, and our meat is cooking properly. Over here, I do have our homemade preserva, okay? Or, oh my goodness, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need some muscle here. Maybe I need to call Anita. <laughs> here we go. So this is our preserved tomato, which we do every year. Okay, it's part of our, of our gardening. Okay, tomato, they have just been lightly blanched first. Okay, and quickly cooked to pick out some of the sweetness and then jarred with a little bit of beef. Okay, so at this point in time, I got a little bit of color. Now I'm gonna deglaze it. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna enhance that flavor that I'm looking for the meat. I'm gonna clean those bottom pieces. I'm gonna have some white wine. And what is the purpose of the white wine? Because many people are asking me, why would you have white wine right now? This is a very, very good question. It's like when you're making a roast, the, the bottom bits is on the bottom of the pan, they, are, they need to be completely absorbed by the acidity of the wine. And that's what is happening. So we basically clean the bottom of the pan, the wine has got some acidity. We're using a white wine. Would I recommend a red wine? Probably not, because there is too much high tannin into the wine. But as I'm having this wine over here, I'm gonna have a certain level of acidity. I clean all the beautiful bits on the bottom of the pan. And now I'm gonna let all the alcohol evaporate. That's a very important step. 
If the alcohol has not evaporated, what's gonna happen? Your tomato sauce will taste of wine. And that's not what you want. How do I know that my alcohol is evaporated? Well, first of all, you're gonna smell it. As I'm going on top of it here, I don't smell the strong alcohol that taste of the wine. I'm really smelling the onions, the garlic, and the sausages. And also because it's completely reduced and it almost create almost like a little coating. This is all the sugars of the wine that are being developed. Okay, so here we go. The wine has evaporated. See the garlic there? The garlic is still present, okay? But as we're gonna cook it, it's gonna break right down and it's gonna give me the flavor necessary. If I was gonna chop it, it was not gonna be present. So I'm gonna have my tomato sauce. And here, I'm gonna be very generous because we might have some hungry people at home, okay? And here is the thing. So we're gonna make sure that the sauce is perfectly, is coming to a boil. Soon as the sauce comes to a boil, what are we gonna do? We're gonna season it. Now, one question I of, I'm often asked is, oh, but tomato sauce takes a long time. No, it does not. A tomato sauce is from the family of, or tomato is from the family of fruits. So you don't wanna cook the tomato sauce for very long. We are probably gonna cook this tomato sauce probably for between 20 to 25 minutes maximum. That's why it's very important that our meat is properly roasted, properly, and well seasoned. Why, so, why did you have a question? So why did you use sausage as opposed to just a regular other You could, of you could. This is a, this garlic sausage we know first with the farmer where they're coming from and also because there, there, there is not very much fat. Could you use ground beef? Of course you can. Could you use a, a substitute that's not uh, meat? Of, well, I mean, you, you could use a uh, substitute of meat, probably turkey, I guess. I don't know. So if you don't want any beef or don't use any meat whatsoever, okay? So substituting meat, I mean, there is a lot of meat substitute. I do not recommend them personally. If you want to do it, you can strictly go on a simple tomato sauce and there is nothing wrong with that. That's a great idea. Okay, but meat substitute, um, I don't know. I, uh, I like to know what is in my product. So I'm never too comfortable using a product that I really don't. Okay, so as soon as it comes to a boil, what I wanna do, I wanna taste it. So remember, there is garlic, there is onions, there is the sausage meat that, that could probably have a potential bit of seasoning and, it, and, it, and the anchovies. The anchovies is the only salt so, so far. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna quickly taste it. And right off the bat, what am I tasting here? I'm tasting the beautiful sweetness of the tomato, a little bit of the spiciness of those garlic sausages. I could have potentially a little bit of chili flakes if I wanted to, okay? But instead of all the chili flakes, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have just a little bit of pepper, okay? The saltiness for me right now is actually quite fine. So I don't necessarily need it, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna let it gently come to a boil. I'm gonna set it on the side. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna move it right here. I have a stove right here. And we're gonna set it on the side at a medium heat and we let it cook, okay? Very simple, so not too complicated. We always wanna keep an eye on it and we want to make sure that it's properly, properly cooked. Very important that the tomato sauce doesn't have to boil too hard. It needs to really be at a very medium, medium heat, never being too high of a heat, okay? Because if you reduce the tomato too much, it's gonna to become too strong and it's gonna become more light like ketchup. So over here, now we're working on our bechamel, okay? What is a bechamel? Nothing more than a fancy word than a, a cream-based sauce without using any cream, just using milk, okay? So what we have here, okay? And I'm gonna use a different technique I'm doing. So watch this. I have some saffron, okay? 
which I'm going to try to open now. It's always part of a challenge to open it. These beautiful little jewels and we're using some Spanish saffron. You can use any type of stuff. And what I'm going to use, I'm going to put some couple of threads into the milk. Okay. So what's going to happen is going to release a little bit of the aroma, a little bit of the flavor. Okay. Can you show to the overhead camera how much of the saffron you put in? Have a look. And you can see it's already. Okay, it's like a pinch. Just a pinch. Uh, it's a little bit, it's a little bit maybe more than a pinch. I would say a quarter of a teaspoon. It's really, really small amount. So over here, we're going to start it. Always the technology here is always the best thing. Okay. Here we go. Sometimes it becomes a little temperamental. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to melt some butter. So again, we are looking to make a bechamel. So the bechamel, we want to do equal part butter to flour. So in this case, for one liter of milk, which I have over here, I'm going to have uh, 30 grams of flour and 30 grams of butter. And here we have the, the saffron and the milk mix up. The butter needs to melt. Okay, we want to make sure we do not burn the butter. So here we go. Look at that. The battery starts foaming up. It's going to release all the milk from the solids, but it needs to really melt properly. As soon as the butter it is melted, that's when we're going to have the flour. Okay. Again, equal part here of flour and equal part of butter. You can see the butter is still there a little bit. I'm going to have the flour right now. Okay. So be very, very careful now. We want to make sure we cook the flour. Okay, nothing worse than having a bechamel than it tastes like flour. The flour needs to cook. See, it's coming together really easily. Here we go. We're gonna roll, blow the heat a little bit more. Cook the flour for a few minutes. Voila. You wanna make sure that it's completely all cooked. Really takes few minutes. Perfect. So as soon as the, the bechamel, we're going to start adding the milk. Okay. So we're going to add a little bit of the milk at the time. The milk that is being infused with the, with the saffron. Okay. But we haven't seasoned it yet. Okay. So we're going to add the milk. We're going to wait until the milk and the mixture comes from water. Now, there are two ways to do it. I'm gonna quick remember to turn my tomato sauce. Remember, you have to be able to multitask. That's why it's good to make this tomato sauce ahead of the game, okay? Now, here's the important part. When you do a bechamel, the most important thing is to make sure that you don't have any lumps whatsoever, okay? So I'm gonna have my milk, I see it in other all at once. What's the secret to no lumps? Make sure you mix it properly, okay? See the way I'm doing it right now? I'm mixing it. And I wanna make sure that on the corner, that's sometimes where the flour and butter gets trapped. So I have to make sure that it's perfectly, perfectly mixed. Now, the question should be, what happens if I do have lumps? Not a big deal, just strain it. You just strain it for a fine match, and you want to make sure that all the lumps are being removed. Has anyone that's been gluten free and dairy free ever needed to have something that was like you could substitute a bechamel? Absolutely. Like, you've Absolutely. Got the flour, you've got the butter that, that's all dairy and all flour. Okay. So what would you do? Okay, so obviously you can use different type of thickening agent instead of flour. Okay. It, it could be arrowroot, could be any anything, could be almond flour if you want it. Now instead of milk, what could I do? Well, so, and you don't want to use butter. Well, you can make a mixture, for example, of oil, okay? And maybe almond flour or, or any type of flour that has not too much gluten in it, okay? And then instead of use the milk, what I recommend, for example, in this specific case, you can make a vegetable stock. 
okay? And the vegetable stock will be based with all the trimming of the squash. You bring it to a boil, you create this beautiful little flavoring, okay? And it could be your, your liquid base, okay? And now, would you have more flavor? Would it make a difference? Yes, but not necessarily. Because I actually think using the liquid of the, of the squash, it will actually be a little bit more flavorful and obviously a little bit more healthy. I keep stirring my tomato sauce. I wanna make sure my sauce is perfectly done. And I wanna make sure that it's, it doesn't stick on the bottom of the pan. Now, if you were doing this at home and you weren't in a rush, you can make your sauce for- The bechamel minutes. and the tomato sauce, you can definitely make it the day before and it will be perfect. Look at this. See, it's coming together. Now, I don't want a thick bechamel, okay? I really don't. See, it's coming together. Look how nice it's coming. And look at that, no lumps whatsoever. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. So we wanna make sure that it's perfect. So are you waiting for it to thicken? And as you can see, it's thickening already. Can you see it's thickening? No. And as you can see, it's thickening to a point that has absolutely zero lump. It's so shiny and perfect, okay? But I wanna make sure that also gives me the perfect little piece. Okay. I have a question here. Um, what, what is the consistency similar to? I would say more about a, like a light cream sauce. Okay. A very, very light cream sauce. As you can see here, it's fairly light. Okay. Very, then it coats on the back of your spoon. And I will show you in a second, as soon as the sauce is done, what the consistency I'm looking for. But I want to make sure right now, the most important thing that my sauce is cooking. Okay. I don't want to taste that flour. Okay. So I'm gonna season with some fresh nutmeg, okay? Always try to use the fresh nutmeg. And of course, some salt. And potentially, small amount of black pepper, okay? So look at that consistency. It's very much like a cream sauce, fairly light. I think it's so great about this recipe is that you can make it in advance, you know? I, that I, is the I, best I thing. I love recipes like that. You know, the, be the best thing about this one is exactly it. You if familiar? everyone's hungry and you have people over, they can start digging into that while you all cook together to make the second part, you know? That is, that is exactly the point. So I want to show you, because the question was asked is, what is the consistency? Just look at it. So I'm gonna, I just put a little bit more milk here just to make sure that I, I don't want, again, I do not want it too thick, okay? So I wanna show you this one. The back of my spoon, look at the, uh, the coating. Fairly loose, but it coats in the back of my spoon. That's what you're looking for. I'm tasting it, perfect seasoning. Perfect seasoning. And we are almost there. This is the beauty about creating recipe like this. And first of all, it can be definitely done ahead, okay? And also they're super, super simple once all your mise en place or your prep is ready. My bechamel is done. So this is, is this what you use in, um, in um, lasagna? Yes, the bechamel, well, obviously we don't use saffron, okay? But yes, a bechamel, that's the base you would use, for example, a lasagna. And it's also moussaka. On the moussaka, okay. Now, Joe, in, in Greek, sometimes on their moussaka, they actually put a little bit of cloves into the base of the of their, of their bechamel. Here we just salt, pepper, and nutmeg. I want you to show you how perfect, really, is this bechamel. The coating is phenomenal, and I, I cannot stress the importance of really having it really thin enough. Wow, it needs no salt whatsoever. I can always add, but I can't take away, okay? You just gotta remember that. Again, if I wanna cook the bechamel for another two to three minutes. Now, to this bechamel, 
what I'm going to add. I'm going to add now my roasted butternut squash. Have a look. I'm not going to add it all. Okay. Look at that squash now. It's thickening. It's giving us a beautiful little creamy depth. Can someone make a comment? Oh, that must be so delicious. It is. It is. It is quite delicious, actually. It's very nutritious. You know, I can smell, see the color has changed. Okay. I still want to make sure that I cook it. Okay. I don't want to, I want to make sure that I cooked up the squash. I want to make sure that it's a big part of this dish. Okay. So what we're going to have maybe one more tablespoon and I'm gonna keep some on the side because we're gonna have it when we assemble the pasticcio. Two more minutes, we're almost there. Our tomato sauce is going phenomenally. It's actually quite there. You know, it's not taking that long and I, and it's amazing when you really see a tomato sauce and that's just all the sweetness and I want to show you in a second, as soon as I remove this one, the color of that tomato sauce. The problem that many people make when they make the tomato sauce is overcooking it. And what's going to happen? It doesn't become red anymore. It's almost become orange. Why? Because you lose all the nutrients. Again, we're talking about nutrients. You often say, you know, you spend a lot of time growing your vegetable, allowing your vegetable to, to remain fresh, full of nutrition. So it's no point for you to overcook all this vegetables. All right, this is a question for me. Um, is, you know how I love to make everything on Sundays and do our cooking yeah. on Sundays. Can you make this in advance and almost freeze it or um, have it later on in the week and put it I, together? I, 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 cook it right away? I actually think the best way for this dish is actually what you said. Once you make it, bake it, okay, and then keep it on the fridge. You can just reheat it if you want. It's always good whenever you assemble in a Pyrex like this. For example, we have a Pyrex like this. It's just the same thing when you're making a lasagna. Lasagna is better the next day, believe it or not. So cook it first. Cook it first, bake it. Once it's baked, you let it set. Because when you're making a lasagna and you bake it, you cannot eat it right away. It needs at least 20 minutes, one hour to really set to allow all those flavors to set ready, almost like they're pressed together. I would say the same thing for this one. So here we go. My bechamel is ready. As you can see it, it's nice and smooth. It's not thick, okay? I do not want it thick. Perfect. Maybe I can add a pinch of salt. Now, why does it need salt now? Is that because the- The sweetness uh, of, the, of yeah. the squad. That would have been the sweetness of the squad. Then not as interview, but that's perfect. Now, I'm gonna remove my bechamel and I'm gonna show you again my tomato sauce. Have a look at the color. Have a look at that. Look at the color. Have you noticed? Still beautifully red. Okay, I'm gonna lower it down. I'm almost there. The freshness of the tomato, the sweetness of those garlic sausages, a little bit of the spiciness, the garlic is melting right down. Look at that. But it's very, very, very aromatic. So I'm gonna lower the heat here. Again, my tomato sauce is not far. I wanna taste it. Again, I wanna make sure my tomato sauce has the flavor that I'm looking for, okay? Remember we had no salt, okay? And I'm there already. I'm really there already. Remember, we still add cheese here. There is a little bit of pecorino we might want to have. So I really don't want to overwhelm this dish. Okay. So this one is probably, I would say, it's got another five minutes, very low temperature. We let it cook. Okay. We have our Pyrex, and it's already been greased with a little clarified butter. Okay. Now I want to start looking of my finishing part. So I have my beautiful vegetable here. Remember, I still have a little bit of the juice of that squash. I want to have the juice for freshness, okay? The beautiful nutrition is a big part of it, okay? I have my peppers here, okay? So 
okay? The roasted pepper here, and they've been nicely roasted, marinated with the beautiful fresh herbs. It's excellent. Phenomenal part right there, the sweetness of the pepper. And then I have, again, my parsley, my basil to really dress my, um, my pasta again. And of course, the most important part is the pasta. Okay, so let's look at that. So pasta we're using today is called mezze maniche. Mezze maniche translated is half a sleeves. Okay, so basically we use it, it's almost like a rigatone, okay. Here we go, I'm gonna show you in a second. See, like a rigatone. And we just cooked it in salted boiling water for probably a quarter of the time that normally would take. So let's say this pasta on that box will tell you it takes 17 minutes to cook. Well, we cook it for 14 minutes. We did not cook it all the way. And, there were, and that is why. So here's the pasta, we partially cooked it, okay? And it still got, a lot of the bite of al dente. And the reason why is because I don't know the pasta is going to go back and cook in the oven. It's going to bake in the oven with the tomato, with the vegetable and, and the pecorino. So we don't wanna make sure that we do not overcook. Really, it's probably the worst thing you could do. Have a pasta that is cooked for 17 minutes, and then it's cooked for another 15, 20 minutes in the oven. And then you're gonna have what? Puree of pasta. That's not, that's not what you want. Okay, so let's look at this. Tomato is almost there. I wanna dress this pasta, okay? Partially cooked, okay? Again, probably 30 minutes. If it's say 17 minutes, always check your box. If it tells you 17 minutes, three to four minutes before you take it out. I'm gonna have my roasted pepper, sorry, my roasted eggplant. We have another question here. How do you get the extra juice from the roasted squash? How do I get the extra juice? What do you mean you by- That you did the skin, right? The extra juice in which case, sorry? From I, the squash, the, the roasted squash. You made the second one. Oh, I just juice it. I just had, uh, there was one squash, half we roasted in the oven, and the other half we just peeled it and we juiced it. It's just pure juice of a of, uh, of, of butternut squash. Is that the question? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so it's not, uh, I didn't do anything else special. I just had, I just grabbed the squash, the raw squash, nothing else, and I juiced them. I, I, I had it. another question here. Um, the the actual squash. Okay. Um, I'm, adding the, I'm adding the peppers meanwhile. Okay. Yes. Right, I've got to ask this person back. I don't quite understand this question, so I'm just going to ask them back. Okay. So I'm going to add the peppers here. So look at this. I'm still having this beautiful color pasta. Okay. Could I have my sauce is done? I'm gonna shut it off. Now look at this. At this point in time, I am have this beautiful flavor, this color pasta, then just as it is, it looks pretty good, right? Now, I'm quite excited, okay? Because we are getting to a point of the assemble part. So, here is my tomato sauce. I wanna taste it one more time. I wanna make sure that tomato sauce is just perfect. Perfect. But what perfect means? It's still got a little bit of that sweetness there. It's got a lot of the flavoring still there. It is really good. So what I'm going to add now to this to the sauce, the sauce is completely off. I'm going to infuse some fresh basil. Now, it's important because it's nice and hot, okay? Then that basil really infuse. And again, as you can see, you're never going to see me chopping 
that bezel, okay? We're gonna, beautiful, beautiful little smell that we got here. Oh my goodness. If I didn't know any better, I'd say this is a pretty good job. <laughs> I'm looking forward to having some. Okay. If only we could share it through the computer. There we go. We can, we can sometimes, I guess, one day. So here we go. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab a lid real quickly. And I'm gonna start assembling. So the first element I'm gonna have is this beautiful tomato sauce. And it's gonna coat it. And I'm not gonna have it all guys, okay? Here we go. Just like that. I'm gonna go grab my bechamel, which is right here. Look at my beautiful bechamel. It's nice and yellow, luscious, delicious. Again, if I didn't know any better, I think I've done a pretty good job. I'm gonna mix that tomato. Oh, look at that. It smells delicious, absolutely delicious. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the bechamel into the sauce. Look at that. And again, we're gonna coat everything nicely. Now, you're probably gonna ask me, say, okay, daddy, but so what happened to the juice of squash? And what was the purpose of it? If you're patient now, I will show you. So, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna stop this baby, he's still talking. Look at this, nice and creamy. So we're gonna have to get a little bit of that juice, raw juice of squash. Now, why, is, why am I adding it down? Because I wanna make sure that flavoring, the moisture, the raw flavor of that squash is present. And also because the fatness of the bechamel, okay, it will be much, much lighter because the juices, the sweetness of the, of the raw juice of the squash would actually really some of the flavor in it. Now, I'm gonna make some room for myself here. I'm gonna have a little bit of pecorino. You can use Toscan, this is Toscan Pecorino. You can use Pecorino Romano. You can use Parmigiano. You can now, use... we had our Stone Truck, uh, Stone Town cheese today. What would you use for there? I would definitely use my favorite. It's called the Grand Trunk. Yeah. It's almost like a Gruyere, phenomenal, phenomenal cheese. Now you look at this, it's really coming together. All those flavors are really coming. The pasta is coating deliciously, okay? But if I'm gonna do it like this, Chances are, it might still be a little bit dry. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm gonna remove this one for a second. I'm gonna bring my Pyrex down again, and I'm gonna build it almost like I would do a lasagna, okay? So I'm gonna put a little bit of bechamel on the bottom, okay, just like that. I'm gonna take some of the tomato sauce, flavor with a beautiful basil, with a beautiful brown sausage meat, just like that. I'm gonna allow it to kind of marry nicely. Just exactly the same way you would making a bechamel. Now I'm gonna have my pasta. Look at that. I don't know about you guys, but this is, is looking pretty good to me. Beautiful vegetable. All those nice flavors are coming I'm together. I'm salivating. I am too, <laughs> and normally I don't when I'm cooking like that. So now I wanna make sure that it's perfectly disposed. I have someone asking here, can you use different kinds of pasta? Um, and also is there gluten-free pasta? Of course, of course. You can definitely use any type of pasta. You can definitely use a gluten-free pasta. Are there different size pastas? Uh, I would not recommend, for example, a spaghetto. Okay, uh, you don't want a short pasta. You want a pasta, you, want, you don't want a long pasta. You want a pasta that is fairly long, 
okay? You want a pasta that has got a little bit more of a- So you do want a long pasta. Sorry, a short pasta. Okay. Sorry, am I confusing you guys enough? You know? <laughs> no, definitely not a spaghetto, a fettuccine. I would not recommend it. Again, more sauce. And you know the best thing, look at this. We have leftover. And you know leftover? Leftover is the best part of it. So we're gonna make sure we make it properly, nicely. I can actually, believe it or not, what I'm smelling right now is this beautiful, fresh, raw butternut squash. You see the sauce is still present, is not completely dry. Nothing worse for having a, a dry lasagna or a dry pasta al forno or definitely a dry pasticcio. Then to finish it up, of course, we're gonna have some beautiful pecorino. Never be shy with that. Just all on the sides. Now, because it's still quite hot, okay? This is a very important part. Because it's still quite hot, okay? So I'm gonna have a little bit of clarified butter or melted butter, so it gives you a beautiful little golden color. Because this one is nice and hot, it's still warm in the center. So what I wanna do is just quickly finish baking the pasta, probably for 10, 15 minutes, okay? And then what I wanna do is push it on the broiler side and give a beautiful golden, golden color. So I'm gonna bake it in the oven. My oven is already preheated. And it's gonna come, it's gonna go in until it's beautiful golden, golden color. Now, what we have here, also, we have some other sauces. So we have more tomato sauce, we have more of the bechamel than we can use in many other, in many other recipes. So these are very available to us. So very easy and simple and simple to assemble. The biggest part about this one, this one is not gonna be just good tonight. It's gonna be much better tomorrow, okay? Do we just need zucchini? We can do peppers. We can do absolutely any root vegetable. Parsnip is phenomenal with that. Any type of pasta that you wish. Looks delicious. Another wonderful meal. So um, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed. It's going to be our last class for the year. And um, yeah, all the recipes are over at oldofyourlife.org. We have wine pairing. And we also have juice pairing, which is a little bit different. And I hope you enjoyed today's class. Like and share. And we'll say bye for now. Ciao, everybody. Cheers. Ciao, guys. <laughs>